are y'all here with me? Hey. Welcome back to season five, episode three of Wine Down Wednesday with my lady of the week. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, guys, it's rare that I have featured the same lady of the week. Um, the reason for that is that I believe that there are so many phenomenal women over the age of 40 out there who have such amazing stories to be told and should be told. However, there's always an exception to every rule. My lady of the week this evening, you guys, if you've been around since the beginning of Wind Down Wednesday, she was featured on season one, episode eight, and I like to call her the master of reinvention. Um, this evening's live is titled No Risk, No Reward, and we're going to get into that in just one second, but oh gosh, look at you all, I'm waving to everybody, hi, who's that, Mir L. Me, hey lady, hey everyone, thank you guys for coming into the wine room this evening, hello mommy, my mom is here, hey, hey everybody. All right, guys, you guys know the drill. You know how this thing works for me. Every week, I like to make sure that I give my shout outs. So I want to first start by saying thank you, Alex. Ooh, this is a cute beat tonight. Y'all see these little rhinestones? <laughs> I love it. You guys, please make sure you go follow Alex at M-U-A Alex. Y'all know what I'm going to say with two X's <laughs> on Instagram. Please go show him some love because he shows me love every week. Um, and uh, this week, y'all, I had to do my own hair because uh, Miss Lonnie B, the stylist, is out of town. And, um, you know, I had to do a little something, something to it myself. So this is my washing wrap for the empty hoop. <laughs> All right, guys, as I was saying, my lady of the week, she's been here before, so she's no stranger to you guys. Um, she, like I said, is what I call the master of reinvention, and she has done it once again. She has a new product line coming out, and she wants to come in the wine room and share her uh, new uh, baby with you all. So give me one second, and I'm going to bring her in. But first, y'all, you know the drill. Hey, let's get this wine going. Make sure you take your sip. Clink, 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 clink. Because if you didn't sip, then it didn't happen, right? All right, you guys, let me see who else is here while we wait for her to press her button to come on into the wine room. Second look underscore photography is here. Petersburg 34 is here. Let me see who else is here. Hello, everyone. F to do to DK has joined us. Janet the Badia. I hope I said that right. Or is it bad? Ia Badia Janet. Hi, everybody. Look at everybody coming on. Hey, Kat. Hey, Catherine. I seen you in a minute. Hi, everyone. Come on in the wine room. I'm just waiting for my lady of the week to push her button. Like I said, she is no stranger to the wine room. She was here on season one, episode eight. And uh, as soon as she pushes her button, I'll bring in the wine room. Hey, how's everybody doing today? It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. <laughs> the middle of the week. All right, guys, she just pushed a button. I'm going to bring Miss Tanya Timus Bellamy into the wine room. Give me one second, y'all. Hey. Let's see. She's coming on in. Give me a sec, guys. Oh, there she is. Hi, Miss Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Hey, lady. <laughs> Hey, lady. I love the blue shadow. Oh, thank you. Oh, that is gorgeous. Thank you. Shout out to uh, my makeup artist, Tamika Butler at Meet Makeup um, on Instagram. She always hey, does an Tamika. amazing job. Yes. You did that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tanya. Well, look, you're no stranger here in the wine room. I so am welcome not. Welcome back to the wine room. You know thank how you. this thing goes. Let's make sure we toast it up. Clean, clean, clean. Hey. <laughs> Take your sip. <laughs> All right, everyone. I'm going to let Miss Tanya Timus Bellamy introduce herself to everyone. Tell us who oh, you yeah. are and where you are from. Okay. I am Tanya Timus Bellamy, originally from Southeast Washington, D.C. 
I feel like I've lived as many places as you, Tanya, all over right. the map, from D.C. <laughs> to Atlanta, 20 years in Atlanta, Atlanta to Illinois, Illinois to Mississippi, Mississippi to Ohio, back Girl. from Ohio to Illinois, and now back, to, back to the capital. <laughs> yeah. Back to where I started. I love it. I love yes. it. I love, I love it. I was telling everyone, you know, that you were here before on season one, episode eight. And I always like to refer to you as the master of uh, reinvention. That's my, my name for you. Um, I am just always amazed at your ability to just keep creating and keep reinventing yourself. And this evening live, guys, is titled No Risk, No Reward. And so with that being said, I just want to talk all about that. When you hear no risk, no reward, do you agree with the statement or do you feel like, mm, no, you don't need to do any of that to, to reap any benefits? What do you think? I do agree with that statement because okay. you do, to me, have to take a risk to get the rewards or at least the rewards you desire. I mean, so many people have different things that they desire in life and they all may not require risk. Mm -hmm. But I think as an entrepreneur, that statement has to ring true in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul, um, in order to keep pressing forward as an entrepreneur. Now, has there ever been anything that you thought about doing, but then you were like, mm, that, that might be too risky? Um, I wouldn't say that because I feel like everything that has been placed on my heart or uh -huh. on my soul to do, I feel like it was ordained. So mm. I, I don't deem them as risky because sometimes um, when I have an idea or a thought, um, these things come to me sometimes in the middle of the night. It seems to always be four in the morning when it comes yes. to me. And yes. with that being said, I will sit up in the bed and, and, I don't know, write it all down. It, it just comes to me. Sometimes mm -hmm. things I'm not even really thinking about, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they come in different forms. It's funny you say that because I always say God speaks to me at 1.30 in the morning. Yes. I don't know what it is about that hour or no, I do. It's, it's just quiet. I feel like, you know, he just has my undivided attention and typically right. I'll wake up you know, and, and he's just feeding me thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. And then there are times where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go back to sleep. I'll write this down in the morning. And he's like, nope, you're going to write it down right now. Because if you don't do it right now, then you're going to forget. Can you hear me? Looks like you're buffering. Tanya, can you hear me? I can. I can hear okay. you. Yes. <laughs> it looks like you were buffering for a second. I don't know if you heard what I said. Did you hear what I said? I did hear you, yes. Oh, okay, 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 good. Yeah, so that's for me when it all comes during that hour, and I'm like, okay, what is this all about? But I'm learning to just be obedient and follow that and write and, you know, get it, get my thoughts out and put them on paper. So what motivates you to keep reinventing yourself? And before you answer that, give the audience a little bit about your history, the things that you've done up to this point. Okay, um, I, well, all of the things that I, well, I won't say all of them, most of the things I've done have been in the beauty industry, so beauty related. Um, but you know this story, I opened my first salon at 21. I don't know that that one was so much of a vision and really placed on my heart as it came out of frustration for the situation I was in at that time, working at a salon where I could come to work and the lights may be off or whatever the case may be. And I had like, a nice clientele, so I kind of, but I felt ready to step out on my own. Mm -hmm. A lot of that learning was done on the job and with experience at 21. I mean, you barely know who you are as a woman. So definitely as a, a boss and an entrepreneur, it took a little moment to get it right, but I think I got there. And the people that were in there with me were very patient with me. But from there, I am now at McKenna Jordan. This is salon number 10. I guess I shouldn't skip over the big part of my journey where I met you in Atlanta. I right. had uh, five salons there under the name of Saya Salon and Spa. So we did five locations, three of which were in Buckhead, one in Sandy Springs, and two in Midtown. I think I added that up right. So maybe mm -hmm. it was six of them, not five. <laughs> <laughs> I just know you had a thousand employees. Right, <laughs> yes. So yes, um, I right. did. And obviously at that time, 
the salon industry was very different. We didn't have as much of a social media platform. Right. It was starting to become popular, but we didn't use that tool to drive business. So therefore, a lot of the things that people are able to get through online services, we were providing as a company. So yeah, we did have about 100 employees, several locations, whole complete front end staff, back end staff, everything that took to make, you know, make it go. So fast forward here to McKenna Jordan, I definitely have tried to shift and pivot with the industry. So we do have 12 stations. We're a bar concept salon. We have a wine bar, a hair and extension bar, a makeup bar, a hair bar, and a color bar. So just staying in line with what's going on. Most people are really into the aesthetics, hair and makeup going out. So we kind of dropped the whole spa piece of it and just really focus on the actual outer beauty and leaving the inner beauty to a lot of the destination spas and, and destination places that people like to go to, to really get a complete renewal, um, I guess, of lifestyle or, or the reboot. Mm -hmm. So I think when I think about risk takers and risk in general, I think most people suffer from what I have coined OTE, mm -hmm. and that's overthinking everything. And I think there are people that think they have to have all the answers in order to get started. So as you're developing all of these different concepts and projects, is that ever in your head? Do you ever find yourself overthinking it? Or do you say, I'm going to learn on the job? I think if you ask nine out of 10 people who are around me, they would probably say I'm an overthinker. Really? <laughs> so really? I, really do kind of fall. I don't think I started that way. Okay. I think in the beginning, I just went, you know, I was just on go. But I think as we mature, um, and I think now that I have, I guess, proven myself or put certain products out there, mm -hmm. there's a certain expectation. So gotcha. I probably do overthink it because I want to make sure that I am meeting the expectation. Not only that I think other people, but really that I set for myself because each project, I want to be better than the last. I mean, what's the purpose if you're not evolving and growing and getting better? I mean, I got all these years behind me now and all this wisdom and all this experience. That shouldn't be to, you know, be like, oh, okay, I've done it. Let me just, whatever, I'll just put this out there. No, I probably, I think over time I have, but most people might be the opposite. But for me, I've gotten probably more into overthinking it and making sure every T is dot, every T is crossed, every I is dotted. I have my product launch coming up this week and I've probably driven everyone who is a part of this project completely crazy because right. I am constantly like, I have a, a board in my office and it is like just full of projects throughout the week. Checklist, I love a checklist. I mean, right. in order to get things done, that's so important. So I have probably driven everybody crazy. So I think as I'm mature, I probably am becoming a, a more of an overthinker. But I don't think, okay, so when I, when I think of that, I think of it in terms of kind of like analysis paralysis. It's like they stop because they are overthinking it. And then they're thinking that they have to have everything perfect that it then stops them from making that move. I don't see that with you. I see that what you say is you take your experience up to this point, which has allowed for you to make some really good decisions. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that it actually stops you from saying, you know what, I'm still going to do it. Right, because I don't think I, once I, I'm a very resolute woman in all That's aspects it. of life. That's so I think it. once That's I it. make the decision to do something, it's go time. And that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm I am saying. probably driving everyone else crazy because my stamina and my go is like, come on, we got 10 more things on this to-do list. I want to at least knock off four of them by this time. Blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it doesn't stop me. I think it might drive me. And then sometimes other things are spawned from those things, right. you know, like, or I need to right. add three more things on. I forget. So I think when I talk about overthinking for me, that's where it falls for me, where I'm constantly... Like, oh, well, this could be a little better. This could be a little, let's tweak this. Let's do that. Because right. like I said, I always want to put the best product out there. I think many of my clients um, in Atlanta can attest to that. Like I really wanted to always put the best product out. And, and here in D.C. too. I mean, our salon is awesome. I mean, we right. we greet people when they come through the door. I mean, right. that, that customer service piece has really gotten lost in the black salon. 
because right. everybody has gone to these individual spaces and suites. And that's not fair to you guys as clients or guests. I Absolutely. still want to make sure you guys have the best experience. That we're taking coats, that we're making sure you have a cocktail at hand if that's necessary. All of the things to kind of keep, keep you from overthinking your own job. I want you to come right. in here and this is like, huh. <sighs> A moment you're creating an experience yes always there you go yes yeah yeah for sure okay so when you think about risk taker who comes to mind as like outside of yourself <laughs> mm -hmm. as maybe the ultimate risk taker i don't know if i would i would probably say my mom mm. she actually took a lot of risk she did not always see them completely through but anything that crossed her mind or something she felt like she could do. Even things she didn't feel like she could do. Somebody would be like, oh, that's going to be $2,000. She'd be like, they crazy. Ain't no way. She would take a course, learn how to do something, and put that much time into it just because she felt like the price may have been too high. But I mean, she's owned a record store, a nightclub. Um, she's been a caterer. So anything that crossed her path, she definitely tried. So she always took risks. I don't mm -hmm. think she was as much of a perfectionist as I am in seeing them through and making sure every detail was handled before she jumped off the bandwagon and jumped onto a new idea. But she constantly took risk in that way. Yeah, no, I love it. So that's clearly where you get it from, mm -hmm. <laughs> from your mom. Yes, I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, great example. So what do you say to um, women, especially women in our age group over the age of 40, who get to the point where right, they're just like, you're being kind. Look, 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 you see, I said over the, look, over the age of 40, look, even right. though I just turned 50, so. Right. And we talked about this. I mean, yeah. I'm so proud of you as well. I mean, Thank to see where you. your company is going. Thank um, you. It's a beautiful, a beautiful thing, the whole lifestyle Thank brand. You. And I will always share my age, but I am launching this product simultaneously with my birthday this coming Saturday. I love it. And I will actually be celebrating double nickels this Saturday. Yes. So, you say it. Yeah. I, so yeah, that's what I said. You're being calm with the old right, right. You're getting a little up there, girl, but we don't mind still. No, you know. not at all. So right. with that being said, Tanya, you said you turn into double nickels. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the woman that's like, I'm too old, I can't do it? Or hold up because you are launching a product line, right? Mm -hmm. To that, so it's twofold. And then to the woman that says, oh, there are other hair care products out there. There are other makeup products out there. And then they're afraid to jump in because there's others that are already out there doing it. So the first question to the woman that's over 50 or 40, who feels like she's too old to do something new. And then the second one that says, somebody else is doing it, so why should I do it? Well, I guess for me, I don't believe you're ever too old to do anything that is placed on your heart to do. I mean, Same I think thing. you should always be open to the possibilities yes. that are out there and things that come your way. I mean, especially after the past couple of years we've had, I mean, yes. it's time to get off the bench and, and get in the game. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. If you haven't in the past, I mean, even during the pandemic, I feel like they've talked about how black business is booming, women businesses, entrepreneurs are popping up. And a lot of that was born through, you know, people sitting in those four walls in those homes during that time. So I don't know, I don't I don't believe in age stopping you from doing anything you, you believe in. Um but I mean there will be challenges, but I, I don't know, I don't I don't Can you hear me? I'm sorry, getting calls. There you go. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. No worries. Did somebody call you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, uh, maybe not right now. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. Okay. And then to the person that says, there's already makeup line. And what, what I think about, when I think about a risk taker, I'm thinking about even someone like Rihanna right yes. who decided to go into the beauty industry mm -hmm. when there's mac and maybelline and estee lauder and all these other companies but she was like well, you know i don't care i'm rihanna i'm right. gonna do this so to that person who says you know there's all there, there are already so many other people out there doing it well those other people out there aren't me those ah. other people out there are not rihanna you know what i mean ah. 
So we yes. all have our thumbprint that we have to kind of put out there into the universe. Um, and I mean, there's always a need for something else, something different. I mean, there are plenty of products out there, but none like iconic beauty hey, by the way hair hey, icon. Um, <laughs> yes, I mean, for me, I think I, I can only speak to this particular situation. I've been behind a chair over three decades now. My hands have been in all types of all types, all textures of hair over the years. And this product is a combination of some of the things that I've seen, felt, or the the things that I've heard through my clients. I, I, I really feel like this product is the what they've been asking for over the years. Um, a lot of times, it's all of this talk about inclusion, but a lot of these big companies, they will decide, okay, this is what we're doing now, and then everyone shifts to that. And I'm saying that because I created this product almost a little bit out of frustration. Um, the way you wear your hair, the way I wear my hair, it's getting to be very difficult for us to find products out there because yes. these companies assume that all black women want their hair textured and the heavy butters and all of that stuff all the time. And I am so grateful and so thankful that the, the Curlistas, you know, finally got heard and have their product out there. And I actually have a curl, a texture system in my, in my line as well. But with that being said, then it was forgotten about the women who does the natural press or some of the women who are relaxed. We are still out there and we still want to be served as well. Um, and this product definitely speaks to that. Um, okay, so hold up one second. You, what, what's the name of the line? How Iconic. did you come up with the name? What's yeah. the name? Iconic by T-R-H-I, which stands for The Real Hair Icon. All right, so how did you come up with that name? Well, the definition of iconic, you know, means something that is revered by others and you are, you have mastered your own unique space. Absolutely. And like I say, with over 30 years of experience behind me, um, I feel like I've, you know, show improved in the beauty industry. If I must pop my collar my own, so. You better. Look, so I'm going to help really you pop it too. Like <laughs> this dream speaks to who I believe I am and who I believe I what I've given to this industry. Yes. And obviously my Instagram name has been the real hair icon <laughs> for about right. 10 years now. So no, I and I love it. And, and you're right, that. Tanya. Yeah. You're right. Because before the, um, before it became a catchphrase, you know, before, you know, everybody, oh, I'm a celebrity stylist and all this. Mm -hmm. You've been doing this. This is who you are. Yes. So it makes perfect sense that you're, you're doing this. So, okay. Okay. So tell us um, the different products that you have in the line. So we actually have six different categories in our line. So it, it's very easy to shop for or very easy to understand because I get that all the time from clients. Like I'm in the store so much to choose from. I don't know how to da da da. They want things simplified. So we have a clarify line, which starts off with a scalp oil. This can be done on, Natural hair, relaxed hair, braided hair, weaved hair. It has a little nozzle on the top where you can kind of get in between. So Love it stimulates it. the follicle and kind of, you know, gets things moving along for to prep your hair to shampoo. Okay. So the Clarify line consists of that and a peppermint shampoo. So I have Clarify, mm. then I have a hydrating line, which infused with marula oil is through all of that line. So that's Clarify, Hydrate, Smoothing. For the young ladies like myself, I am natural and I've been natural for 16 years, but very okay. rarely do I wear my natural curls. So these are um, products that have heat protectants, keratin proteins, things to help preserve the hair when you're out in the elements. Nice. And then um, I'm a stylist at heart, so I have a super heavy styling line, lots of sprays, pomades, hair polish, things to, you know, complete the look. And if you're a couple of days in, you might need a little extra pop, some finishing products for that. And our next launch, which I will be doing an Atlanta launch as well in April. I don't have okay. my exact date for that yet. That's when we will launch our texture line. And there's about five products in that line as well. Okay, girl, so you got anything for edges? edges? For thin oh, yeah, edges? Of course, <laughs> I have edge control and edge yeah. I've definitely got all the edges covered. And that's what I'm saying. For me, I have 
unfortunately had to always go to the Avedas, to the Moroccan oils, mm -hmm. to all of these other companies who are not black owned to get the results that I want for my clients and that I want on my own hair. And I want us to be able to have a black owned product that gives us the results that we need. Not a whole relaxer system, not all of the heavy butters and the co-washes because if I'm shampooing every eight, nine days, that cold wash will laugh at my hair. You know what I mean? Right. I need a right. good cleansing and then I go back and hydrate. So, I mean, I think, like I said, I think this category is missing, even though it's a lot out there. I really feel like it's becoming the forgotten category now. Okay. And so where can everybody find it? Where can we go buy your line? You online? Where, 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 we will be. Where so can we get our, it? our official launch date is this coming Saturday, March 5th. Okay. On my birthday, and I am doing a launch um, in the salon. So okay. we have actual foot traffic that day, and then we will go live that Sunday online. And that's okay. um, iconicbeautyproducts.com. So we will, you will be able to shop there. Um, and the goal, um, like I said, always thinking and evolving, the goal Absolutely. is to actually get into a Target, um, Sephora, Ulta, one of the three, or all three. So anybody out there who has connects to that, I would love to, you know, sit down and, and give them my Kanye, spiel. it's already it's done. done. If, it's already done. Knowing I you, know it is. the I way you is. move, how you do, it's already done. <laughs> so yeah. look, it's just from your lips to God's ears right now. And, and that's why done. I was throwing out there every chance I get because you never I know, know that's I, mean, right. I experience that in the salon. You never know who's sitting in your chair, who has those connections. And I would never beat anybody down about it, but I'm definitely going to speak it into existence. The things Absolutely. that I desire and the things that I feel have been placed on my, on my spirit to get done. Absolutely. Okay, so I just have a few questions before we get out of here. Um, so your overall message, because I want to bring it back to, obviously, the brand Hey Lady and us talking to the women over 40 that have a little bit of fear, um, a little bit of hesitance, feel like everything needs to be perfect. What is your overall message to them? I mean, nothing beats a failure but a try. You Ooh, say it again, say it again. Right. I mean, you yes. never know. And I have had some failures, don't get me wrong. I've had two salons. I actually had a product line before. Um, you, you're aware of that. I yes. opened a whole salon under that name, Bella Rituals. And the timing just wasn't right. I got pregnant with my last child at age 44. So I just really had to kind of regroup and, and go back in the lab and, you know, start all over. And it's just kind of coming back to me again to do this project. I mean, that was something, like I said, I did, McCoy is 11 now. So I did that. 11 years or so ago, and I just didn't have um, the, I guess, the business plan that I had set out. I had a lot of travel in place, and I was, you know, mother and a newborn, again, with two other kids. So I had to put that on hold, but I, I'm ready to go at this point. And that's why I said, don't let things deter you. It's, if it's in you, you know, you might have to sit it down, but please pick it up and try it again as many times as you have to until you get it where you want it. Yeah, and you know how you know it's in you because God will keep gnawing at yes, you. Definitely. You know what I mean? And it just won't go away. And yes. then what happens that I always tell everyone is that you don't want a year from now somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. And then you're sitting back like, damn, that was my right. idea. Mm -hmm. I should have, I could have, I would have. So yes. as Tanya just said, nothing beats a failure but a try. Yes. Just try it. All right, girl. Okay, let's see. What is the best advice ever given to you, either professionally or personally? Um, I probably may be paraphrasing here, but um, something of the results, uh, be something about uh, don't take advice from people who are not there to, you know, be a part of the results mm. because. At the end of the day, it's on you. And you can take advice from any and everywhere. And I do get little tidbits and nuggets from here, there, and everywhere. But when that person is always in your ear, it goes back to speaking of that. You're taking advice from someone who's saying, are you sure about that? I don't know about that. Da, 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 da. You know, take, take what you can get and, and keep it moving. Because at the end of the day, those people advising you are not going to be the ones who have to either write the check or pick up the pieces 
or even get the rewards, all of those things, you know what I mean? Yes. So like I said, I may be paraphrasing, but that, that kind of stuck with no, I me. Get it. Yeah. I get it. All right. And okay, so before I ask you the last question, let me see what our audience is saying here. Everybody's waving. Yay, friend. Thank Congratulations. You. That's Kim Locklear Wilson. Hey, oh, Kim. Hey, hey, Kim. Lady. Elementary Thank school you. friend. <laughs> yes. Look, if you guys need a realtor in the Las Vegas area, please yes. hit up my girl Kim Locklear Wilson on IG. She will take care of you. Yes. You got some fire signs in here. You got a whole bunch of waves. Um, somebody, oh, Jay Sloan Beauty. Hey, lady. She says she is in agreement. Um, lots of waves and lots of love. Okay. My last question before you leave is, what's your favorite quote? What do you live by? What's your mantra? My mantra is, uh, she's a dreamer. She's a doer. And she sees possibility everywhere. I mean, you always have to keep your eyes and ears open for the possibilities that are around us every single day. And I don't know. And I am a dreamer. So that, that quote has just always stuck with me. It feels like, you know, it's me, a dreamer, a doer, and seeing possibility everywhere you look. Yeah. Guys, you got to keep dreaming. Don't stop. Yeah, you definitely do. Don't stop. Don't stop. I mean, what's oh. to look forward for if you don't? Absolutely. <laughs> Yes, 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 you got it. And, and dream big too, y'all. Yes. I mean, nothing is impossible. Okay, nothing. Oh, one last thing, Tanya, I want to talk about your nonprofit that you were um, telling me about. So what's going on with that? Yes, it is a extension of Iconic. So what we will be doing is celebrating three women quarterly who are doing iconic things in their field, whether it's tech, um, a lawyer, arts, the beauty industry, whatever the case may be. So we will hold a brunch at a black owned restaurant. Actually shout out to Ayana. She's the owner of Georgia Brown's a dear friend and client. Um, and she will have us hosting at her place here in DC. And this is just an opportunity to inspire each other, to uplift one another, to share our stories because when we talking about those things, these are the things that keep you motivated. Yes. And it can be somebody in a totally different space that drops a nugget that would really change the whole trajectory of your business or or your your dream you know what i mean so this is just an opportunity to keep it flowing and along with that it is uh, a nonprofit where we will give back so we will be giving back to six women six young ladies high school seniors in two different ways three of them we will buy prom dresses for do a whole makeover for prom hair makeup the whole shebang give them a whole cinderella story i love um, it and then giving an educational endowment as well to three separate women um, or young ladies, as I'm calling them, that we see that will be doing iconic things in the future. Because I often feel like even though I started very young, having that little push or someone who could have, you know, mentored me in that moment probably would have made a lot of the mistakes that I did. Right. But right. I have learned from them. So I just want to be that for, for other women and catch them at an early age and, and you know, put those stories out there that may inspire them to do iconic things in the future. I love it. So if there's somebody in the audience that wants to maybe give in some way to that, how, how can we do that? Okay. Um, we will have a tab on our website as well, because it's a whole section dedicated to the brunch and to the nonprofit. So okay. they will be able to do that once we're live on Sunday. And our first brunch is actually March 26th at Georgia Brown's. So we will be posting more information about it on the Real Hair Icon as well as the business page, iconic.beauty by the T by T R H I. So okay. all of those things will be posted in the near future. Um, but I say we do have a date for that first brunch, and it is May March 26th at okay. Georgia. And give give that web address one more time. It's uh iconicbeautyproducts.com. Okay, iconicbeautyproducts.com. Yeah. <sighs> All right, Miss Tanya, you've done it again. <laughs> and I cannot you. wait to walk in Target to walk by Iconic Beauty so I can be like, right. yes, yes. <laughs> Claim it for me. Claim it for me, Tanya. Yes, for sure. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen without a doubt, without a yes. doubt. All right, Miss Girlfriend, I know you're busy, so let's just go ahead and toast this thing out and drink the rest right. of the wine, honey. Clink, 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 clink. Always a pleasure. <laughs> always and you know i was telling them early i said you know i have not had a repeat lady of the week in the wine room 
but you know, like I said, you are definitely the master of reinvention. And I just wanted to let everybody know, no risk, no reward. reward. So you got to do the work. You got to step out on faith and, you know, let it do what it do. So, all right, Miss Tanya. Well, I all will right. be one of your first Thank you so people much for having me. Oh, absolutely. Right. And I'll make sure when you go live on Sunday that I'm there so I can get me some uh, edge control and whatever. <laughs> Look out for it for you. <laughs> for sure. For sure. All right. All right, everybody. Thank All you guys right. so much for joining me here for Wine Down Wednesday with my featured lady of the week. I will see you guys next week with my Philly girls. Yes, Miss Tracy Horn and Miss Shawnee Harvey. I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, Tanya. <laughs>